This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betford. I'd like to be joined by the Tartan Tornado, the unified super lightweight champion of the world, Josh Taylor. Josh, it's been a minute. How have you been, mate? Yeah, it's been a while, pal, and it's good to see you joined the skinhead crew, you know, uh, during, well, you're, the, you're too late, you're at the lockdown, I've done it during the lockdown, mine's just starting to grow back now, but it's good to see you shaved your hair off, mate, and uh, uh, you look good, you see it, mate, you look, you see it. The good news is the viewers won't be able to see me, but they can only assume that it looks tremendous after that compliment, so thanks for that, Josh, I appreciate it. <laughs> you see it, you see it, mate. Let's let's sort of jump straight into it. Finally, you've got yourself a concrete date. Not long ago, now April twenty sixth, we're going to see. Sorry, September twenty sixth, we're going to see you make that mandatory defence finally against Appen and Kong Song. I guess it's yeah. almost just a relief at this point, is it? Yeah, it's good to it's good to finally get the the date over oh, done and dusted and over the line. Now it's only three weeks on Saturday now, so it won't be it won't be too long coming in. You know, we'll fly in. So we're at the most important part of training now. That this this is the next this week and next week is when we'll, we'll start peaking and then and then we start bringing it down so there's not too much training to go but, but the last couple of this the rest of this next week um are the hardest weeks you know this week and next week are the hardest weeks um so we're, we're peaking now and there's not much else training to do and uh, no much left training to do it's just peaking and fine tuning now so we are ready to go we're looking forward to it um and yeah i can't wait to get in can't wait to get in now. It's been a long time at the ring, uh, a long, a long ray. Uh, sorry, a long layoff. That was a tongue twister there. <laughs> uh, aye, a long layoff at the ring. So yeah, it's been good to to get back in it and get in the flow. And, and uh, I can't wait to get going again. Keep the ball rolling. Now I appreciate every fighter needs a bit of time to rest, especially a fighter that's just gone on and won a unified world championship. But with how long the break ended up becoming and the fact you had the cancelled date and then you didn't really know for a while with everything up in the air, I'd imagine you were you were starting to, to, to itch a little bit by the end. Did you manage to keep yourself occupied though before you got back into camp full time? Yeah, listen, I was I, I got the um, I got obviously there was lockdown happening, but I was still able to go into the gym up the road at Terry's. Um I was still able to go in there, but then a, a couple of people complained about that and I ended up in, ended up getting a complaint because of this corona stuff but I was clear I was training in a closed gym you know I still had to go and train but anyway I started I stopped that anyway it was more hassle than it was worth so we went to uh, I started training at home keeping out the roads running keeping fit and uh, I ended up getting my, my garage converted out in, at the house uh, back home converted into a gym so that's uh, that's top of the notch now all the latest equipment and gear in it so I, I started uh, grafting away and keeping myself fit and getting myself in good shape and then obviously with everything being still locked down here I wanted to get back training with Ben and doing a bit of moving around Um, obviously in Scotland everywhere was you know gyms have only just opened up this week in Scotland <laughs> so we've been months behind everywhere else Um, so what happened was we all went over to Fort Ventura, Spain to train and uh, we spent a month over there, five weeks over there. We spent over there training and, you know, getting fit and strong. So, yeah, we come back and then straight back into the gym here in Harlow. So, yeah, everyone, everyone's been good and we're flying and uh, we can't wait to get in there now. Finally, you're going to be facing your mandatory Appen and Kong Song. Uh, these Thai fighters, when they, they come over here for the first time, unknown quantity by all means, but a lot of them ended up being able to fight, funnily enough. How much have you been able to see them? What do you expect from them as well? Yeah, I've saw I've saw a few clips of him on YouTube. Uh, there's a few of his fights on YouTube, you know, and his latest ones on there as well. So, um, and a couple of, there are a couple of other websites that I've been able to see him on fights as well. So, yeah, I've, I've saw a lot of him fighting. I know what he does. I know what he's good at. I know where his strong points are. And I know where his weak points are now as well. So, um, he looks like a handy enough fighter, you know. He, um, uh, and he is he is an unknown quantity, as you say. He's kind of a banana skin. And it can be dangerous, you know. You've seen it how many times in recent, even in recent history as well, in the game, you know. So he looks tall. He's as tall as me. He actually has the same height as me. Um, he, he he punches through the target. His timing's quite good, and um, you know he looks like he's got good power as well. So um, I have to keep fully concentrated and keep, make sure I'm on my game, you know, because I don't want things to slip up. I've got big plans and big big dreams and aspirations that I want to do and if uh, I let it slip up here at the final hurdle then it's it's on hold for a good for the foreseeable future you know so 
um, I have to make sure I get this job done and I'm, I, I get, and I'm going to get it done. I feel in good shape. You mentioned it there, Josh. We have seen quite a lot of upsets since boxing returns sort of behind closed doors. It seems to be suiting some fighters more than others. You've had that sizable following up in Scotland for, for quite a while now. Is it is something you've thought about fighting in them BT studios behind closed doors? Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm not too bothered. You know, it's, um, it is what it is. And, you know, the way I spar and, tr and train anyway, I kind of emulate the kind of atmosphere it's going to be anyway. I, I train without music. I train without people talking in the gym. Um, when I'm sparring, when I'm sparring anyway, when I'm training, I've got music and this running on, and it's a good laugh in the gym. But when I'm sparring, uh, I like to have it quiet. You know, there's no there's no music on, there's no people talking around the ring and stuff like that. So it's silent, and we're emulating the. I always have done anyway. I always um, replicate the sort of how I think it's going to be. So I don't think it'll be too too alien. You know, it'll be like a glorified sparring session with the cameras there, but obviously with my belts and record on the line. So I'll be up for it no matter what. And believe you me, this guy will be up for it as well. It's his big chance to win the world title. So um, obviously he's a massive underdog and he's unknown. So I expect him to be fired up and want to grab this opportunity with both hands. So he'll be right up for it as well. And he'll be bringing his best in a game. Believe that. So I've got to bring mine. And I'll make sure that I do a job when I'm in a and keep my belts. Now, I'm sure you watched some of it. I saw you tweet after the fight. I wanted to go back to Jose Carlos Ramirez, the man you seem to be on a collision course with for that undisputed title. Saw him in there with your old mate, Victor Postel. He edged out a points win. You, by your tweet, you know, what I took from that was you weren't particularly impressed. Did you watch much of the fight? I watched it. Um, I never watched it live. I got up and I went to my bed, obviously. I'm in training camp here myself. And the time difference and stuff, so it would have been a real late, night for me, you know, or early night for me, <laughs> real late all nighter, you know, so um, I went to my bed and I, I got, when I got up in the morning, I didn't go on Twitter or anything like that, I got up in the morning and went on the YouTube and found the fight and watched it on YouTube and, um, you know, I watched it and then turned it off and that was it, but like, I just, from what I saw, I wasn't impressed, you know, I, I really wasn't too impressed, fair play and we got the job done. Um, but I, myself, watching it, scored it a draw. I could have given it a draw. Um, I thought Postal had done very well and ran away with the first half of the fight, really. Um, and then come on, and come on again strong, make a couple of the last, a couple of the later rounds as well. So I, I scored that a draw myself, um, and I wasn't, I wasn't very impressed with what I saw with, with Ramirez. But you know that's been and gone. I saw a lot of things that I will expose in that fight if it happens and uh, you know that's it it's been and gone I've forgotten about it already but I wasn't impressed something that got picked up on on social media that a lot of people were bamboozled by I don't know if you've seen this Josh was, was Andre Ward saying that, that you can't really fight on the inside what did you make of that? Yeah, supposedly he said that I never heard them saying it or anything like that I just said uh, people were saying it and a few guys in the camp said they said it so I put a retweet up as well saying hey, you don't know shit he's obviously not seen me fighting um, or you know, he's maybe he's maybe never even meant. It. He's maybe just been reading off stats and and read things and thought tall southpaw. He can't fight inside. He's boxing. You know, he's maybe thought he's big ranger boxer or whatever. I don't know, but I don't take much of it anyway. I just thought I'd say something anyway. <laughs> well, WBO have ordered uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez to face his WBO, WBO mandatory Jack Catrell. Uh, so it looks like we're going to have to see that fight at some point, perhaps before this undisputed fight. How do you see that fight playing out? That fight does indeed go ahead, Josh. I think if that fight goes ahead, I think Ramirez wins that fight. Um, you know, Jack Carroll is a very good fighter, but I think Ramirez wins it. Um, just for going on sort of last recent performances and stuff for two of them, um, I think Ramirez wins that fight. Um, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully, hopefully I can, hopefully I get through this in three weeks' time with, with flying colours. And pass would come away un uninjured and stuff like that, you know. Um, and then we can get straight on, get that fight on. Hopefully, we can get that on. I would like for that to happen and be good. Good for the sport, really, you know, because, you know, very often you get fights for all the marbles, you know. So um, it would be good for the sport. It has to happen, you know. I think it has to happen. It would be, it would be a terrible shame if another mandatory has to get in the way. Um, but, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully the 
my management team, MTK and top ranking, get that one sorted out. But we'll just need to cross that bridge when we come to it. It sounds like of all well on the 26th, this is, a, this is a fight you want ASAP. Was, is that a fight you've been willing to take behind closed doors with the numbers added up? Yeah, listen, I just want to keep going. I want to, I want to just want to keep the momentum going that I've got at the minute. I don't want to be having um, too much time at the ring and having to adjust to fight night and stuff like that again. So I want to keep the momentum that I've got going. I want to get this fight done out of the way. I don't want to keep in the gym and, you know, get stale. I want to, I want to keep going. I want to keep pushing on. I want to get this fight done, win the fight. Obviously, I think I'm going to win the fight. I feel I'm going to put on a good performance um, and uh, get out of the way, get it done and push on, hopefully, for the bigger things, bigger fights. A couple more things before I let you go, Josh. One thing I wanted to ask you about, if, if everything goes your way and you are the, the undisputed super lightweight champion of the world, it seems there's a natural move to welterweight there. Interesting times at Welterweight. You've got one of the best fighters in the world in your promotional stable, Terence Crawford. You've got the man you named your dog after there, Manny Pacquiao. What would be your yeah. dream fight at 147 out of those top guys? Listen, I'd love to fight them all. Obviously, uh, Terence Crawford's the, the big name at the minute. So, obviously, I'd, I'd love to fight Terence Crawford. I'd love to fight them all. I'd love to fight them all. I'd love to fight my hero, Manny Pacquiao, as well. Do you know, it'd be sharing a ring with my hero would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, any one of them, you know, and I'm not scared of any of them. You know me, Ryan, you know what I'm like. You've known me for a few years now, so I'm not scared of absolutely anyone, and I'll fight anyone, and I believe in my own ability to, to beat these guys. So um, I'm, I'm not phased by any single one of them, but um, ideally, probably Crawford, because he is tipped as the number one pound for pound at the minute. So I've always said that I want to fight the best. To be the best, you've got to fight the best. So... Um, that would be the one I would be aiming for, yeah. And just finally, Josh, uh, it's been just over a week now. I'm sure you were tuned in that final fight cam show. Dillian White, Alexander Povetkin. Dillian White with the two knockdowns in round four and then an absolutely stunning finish from Alexander Povetkin. Did you watch a fight? And if you did, what did you make of it? Yeah, I watched it. And, uh, massive shock, you know. Uh, what a shock it was, you know. I was expecting... Dylan to then get him out there after the two knockdowns. I thought he was going to jump on him and and uh, get him out of there. And then he comes out and hits him with that shot out of nowhere. It was an absolute peach. But when I was watching the fight, I did I did notice that Pebekin was changing his levels quite well, changing his height quite well, and and looking for that angle to, especially the left hook to the body. He was going jab and slipping down and going and looking for the left hook to the body or the left hook to the head. And uh, he obviously saw saw an opening there and he uh, threw that shot and what a shot it was, connected right on the chin and that was it. It was a peach of a shot. Like, uh, if anybody got hit with that, they were knocked out. The big debate now, uh, Dillian and Eddie both said they want to go straight back into that. They want to run a rematch back straight away. If you were in that position, would you would you be looking to do the same thing? Do you think Dillian maybe should look and have a, an interim fight before he goes back in after a knockout like that? Well, no, maybe maybe go straight in for it. I think because he'll want to get his mandatory position back now as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think he's took the loss incredibly well. Um, so he has. I think he's. I think he's taken it incredibly well. He's already. I've seen. Already, he's already back in the gym in Portugal training, um, working on improving and saying that he's working on improving and things that he done wrong that he think he done wrong. So I think he's took the loss on the chin and you know he's not done any complaining he's took it like a man and he's he's took it well and he's back he's back on the horse and and trying to right his wrong so uh, fair play to him and i um, i think he's doing the right thing yeah 100 percent. now just to finish with you josh before i let you go you know we're talking about you going and fighting for the undisputed title you've you've headlined many a time at home you've unified you won the world boxing super series I know what you're like, a very driven person. What other goals do you have in mind? I know you spoke about wanting to go on undisputed, a welterweight title. Is there anything else, though, that's in the back of your head that you think I'd like to take that off as well? Um, do you know what? I, I don't think about it too much. Um, obviously, the big goal at the minute is to be undisputed world champion, the first British fighter to be undisputed world champion since Ken Buchanan who is also my countryman and also from the same city as me and got connections to my hometown as well, if it's the Preston Pan. So that story is a story and piece in history in itself. So 
I want to tick that off. That is the biggest thing on my on my list. Um, obviously, I want to fight in America and do the big fights in America as well. I want to have a fight at either Easter Road, my beloved Hibs team stadium, or um, up on the Edinburgh Castle on the Esplanade. A big fight there. So they they're the dreams of mine that I want to do. Um, obviously, move up to one four seven and win a weight a title, a world title at a second weight. That's a that's a dream of mine as well. So after that, if I do all that, then I think that's my bucket list probably fully ticked off. You know, if um, I then I've, I've I've achieved sort of everything I could in boxing. I would imagine you know I'd have all the four belts, the ring magazine belt, the Muhammad Ali trophy belt. You know, went up in weight class, won another world title, whatever belt it may be. Um, I had a fight at Edinburgh Castle. I had a fight at Easter Road. That's that's job done for me. That's uh, that's me satisfied. That's me satisfied. Hundred percent. There's no point if I've done all that. There's no point in then carrying on. Um, just for to keep fighting. You know, I've, I'd rather get out of the game with my all my faculties about me, and uh, enjoy and enjoy the rest of my life as a healthy person. All right, well, Josh, I appreciate you've you've had a long day. Uh, I've kept you for, for long enough, so we'll call it there. But thank you, Zoe, speaking to me and speaking to Boxing Social. I'm sure we'll catch you close at the fight as well, but take care. No bother, no bother, mate. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Speak to you soon, my man, and hopefully see you soon again too. <laughs>